we thank you and we honor you today, Lord God. We thank you for this opportunity to come together and break the bread of life today, Lord God. I'm asking that you will cause me to decrease where you may increase, Lord God. Cause your word to go forth today, Lord God, that we, O oh Lord God, may hearken unto you, O oh Lord God. We may do, O oh Lord God, according to your will today, O oh Lord God. For you said if two or three are gathered in your name, you shall be in the midst. Lord God, I'm asking today that you will take hold today, O oh Lord God. Teach us, show us, guide us, mold us today, Lord God. As you, Lord God, cause the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to truly be acceptable in that sight. Lord God, we lift you up today, O oh Lord God, and we pray, even, O oh Lord God, for the shepherd of this house, that you will strengthen today, O oh Lord God. Come from when you said, by your stripes, we are healed. We declare it today, Lord God, that you, O oh Lord God, will get the glory, the honor, and the praise today, Lord God. This we ask in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, give God a hand. Praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is so awesome. Keep playing, hallelujah. God is an awesome God. But we got to understand, amen, God has called us, amen, to go forward and do his will, amen, both of them. Hallelujah. God is so awesome, amen. But I want to open up, amen, in Luke chapter number two. Luke chapter number two. Because, see, we're living in a day and time right now where so many people are so busy doing so many things. Amen. And, and I thank God for everything that happens in my life. Amen. Whether it's good, challenging, heartbreaking, indifferent, whatever it might be. The Bible says rejoice in all things. And again, I say rejoice. And I can truly, honestly say that I can rejoice in everything that God has done for me. St. John chapter number 4. I'm sorry. Luke chapter 2. I'm jumping ahead of myself. I'm just. I thank God. Amen. I thank God for being able to be before you today. Amen. Luke chapter number 2. As I get the scriptures. I want to begin at verse number 41. Verse number 41. Hallelujah. Luke, thank you, Jesus. Luke 2, beginning at verse number 41. Hallelujah. And it reads, everyone has it. Let's go to verse 40. This is about Jesus. Amen. Verse 40 says, And the child grew and was strong in spirit. Filled with wisdom and grace, and the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, 12, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey. And they saw him among the kinfolk and acquaintances. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him. In the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, how is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? I must be about my father's business. I love that scripture. Because he said, I must be about my father's business. I want to speak to you briefly about Hallelujah. Now the title just left me. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Huh? Let's finish what we started. Amen. Amen. See, the enemy is something else. Amen. It's like I wrote it down so many places and I didn't write it down. I didn't even bring my notes with me, but glory be to God. But let's finish what we started. Amen. Amen. Don't you know that God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light? Amen. So he, this is Jesus at 12 years old. He was so much hungry for the word of God because he knew what his purpose was. He said, I must be about my father's business. Amen. See, I wanted to bring that out because, see, this is something that he started from birth. He started as a child. Amen. So it doesn't matter your age or how, how young you think you are. Amen. It's time right now to get busy for God. Amen. Amen. He said, I must be about my father's business. But I want to jump to St. John. St. John. Amen. Chapter number four. Chapter number four, because see, this is something that a lot of times we don't really look at, amen? And we'll sit back and we'll get comfortable and complacent, you know, when it came to church, when he got saved and sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and you know, when it grew up a little bit in God, and then all of a sudden we get to that comfortable place. That comfortable place where we're just sitting back saying, you know what, I don't have to do that much. But you know, God is calling us to work, church. God is truly calling us to work. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. St. John chapter 4, beginning at verse number 1. Hallelujah. I wanted to begin at verse 1 because it says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost. You say, why he paused? I want, every, I want that to soak in. It says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit to go into the wilderness. I'm not in the right place. Y'all didn't tell me. I'm like, I'm looking like that's not the right chapter. Hallelujah. It was good anyway, anyway but Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That was talking about when he was tempted of the devil. Amen. He's still, hallelujah, don't you know? In order to fight that temptation, you got to be full of the Holy Ghost. That's the reason why we got to constantly seek him. Amen. But that ain't where I was going. Amen. Now we need John chapter 4. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Chapter 4. Amen. God is so awesome. It says, when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees, yes, heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Though Jesus himself baptized not the disciples, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. You know, people done heard about all the stuff we done did and everything else. But that's besides the point. We just got to keep on working. Amen. Verse 4 says, and he must need go through Samaria. A lot of people don't really understand what Samaria was. Samaria was the place that the Jews avoided no matter where they had to go. It was a place that they despised the people that were down there. They considered them half-breeds. Amen. They didn't associate with them. But Jesus, the Almighty, said, I must go through Samaria. Because he, being full of the Holy Ghost, there's some things that people would sit back and they'll be like, well, now nah, I can't do this and I can't do that. But when you got the love and the desire to please God, see, you'll start to do things that other people might call crazy. I'm going to bring some stuff out that what today people are called crazy, but the Bible called it faith. Amen? Amen. But we're going to get to that in just a minute. Amen? Amen. So I like the way he said, I must need go through Samaria. Then come up he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar. Amen. It says, near the parcel of ground where Jacob gave unto his son Joseph. It says, now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary with his journey, sat there on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. There come the woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. Give me to drink. For his disciples were going away unto the city to buy meat. So they went to go get some food for Jesus and the rest of them because they had been doing so much. They've been traveling and it's like we're hungry. Amen. Jesus sitting now trying to take a rest. But because of his desire 
to please God because of his desire to see we're sure Jesus came down on earth as a man, amen, to show us how we're supposed to live as men, amen, and women, amen, as mankind, what we're supposed to do representing God, amen. And we call ourselves Christians, and being a Christian is being Christ-like. Amen? Amen? And a lot of times people will sit back and they talk about, yeah, Christ laid hands on the sick, Christ cast out demons, amen? But it's something else that Christ did, amen? We talk about the passion and how he suffered, amen. but I want to break out something. He also put the flesh under subjection. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So in verse number 8, it says that his disciples went to go get meat. And see, he was sitting there at the well talking to this woman. And he started to tell the woman about herself. But she realized that, you know, when they say that the Messiah is coming, one called Christ. We know he's coming, but, you know, who is it? And Jesus let her know that the one that you're talking to right now is he. He starts to reveal himself and reveal things to her. Amen? This is Jesus. And, you know, he was still hungry and tired, but he looked beyond the way he was feeling and what was down in him because he was hungry for the souls. Amen? You see, that's something that we got to look at because we got to examine what Jesus did. Amen? Let's jump down to verse number 27. Amen? Because I gave you a quick scenario on what happened. Amen? When Jesus started talking to her, she, she realized who he was and she went to go tell other people about him. I just met a man that just told me all about the things that I did and he's telling the truth. God need to come and meet him because I think he's the Messiah. I think he's the Christ. You know, people don't come down here and talk to us. We down here in the hood, down here in the ghetto. People don't normally come down here and talk to us. So if somebody's talking, you need to start taking heed. Because a lot of times they say, you go to the church down there, you you, you go down there, y'all always have your doors open. But what good comes out of the ghetto? What good comes out of Nazareth? That's what they said about Jesus. But I'm here to tell you, God will take y'all to the muck and the mire, raise you up and, and sit you up on high. But I want to show you the reason why he do it. Amen? Amen, amen. Verse number 27 says, And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, What seeketh thou? What seeketh thou? What, what's going on? Or oh, why talketh thou with her? They, they was wondering what was going on, but they didn't question him. They was talking among themselves. The woman, it says, the woman then left her water pot and went on her way unto the city and said to the man, Come see the man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out to the city and came unto him. It says, In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. He still hasn't had anything to eat. We know he was hungry and tired, but... He was looking at their soul. Amen. See, that's why I want to say let's finish what we started. Amen. See, when they came into the house of God, God then pulled us out of darkness, Amen. put us in his marvelous light. He said that you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. If you're going to be a witness unto God, it's time for us to truly be a witness. Uh, Paul said we should be living up pistols being read of all men. So it's time for the world to be able to see how we're truly living, that we are truly representatives of God, truly ambassadors for Christ. It's time for us to step up and finish what we started. Amen? Amen. Uh, but it don't stop there, amen, because, you know, they say, you know, Master Eat, verse 32 says, But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Amen. Therefore said his disciples one to another, Has any man brought him all to eat? Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish the work. See, Jesus, the fulfillment that he got was to do the will, do the will of God, and to finish the work. He didn't want to just start on something and then throw it off to the side. See, there's a lot of times we'll tell God we're going to do something. We'll sit up and say, Lord, I'm going to live you. Lord, I'm going to do this. And I, I, I love it when they sit up and say, you know, Lord, Paul said I press towards the mark. A lot of people pressing to get to work. A lot of people pressing to go out. A lot of people pressing to get in quarantine for so long. They pressing to get to a restaurant. But how many people pressing to get to the house of God? 
God? How many people pressing to cry out to God? How many people pressing to fall on their knees and give God some glory? How many people pressing to be able to praise God? It don't matter how I feel. It don't matter where I'm going through. I thank God. Because don't you know, the Holy Ghost leaped in my spirit when I see my wife walk through the door. Because I know she was in an accident. But God put it upon her to pass her way to the house of God. God spared her life. God gave her activity of her limbs. God allowed her to be in the land of the living. So she said, I'm going to go and give my God some glory. We got to pass. And so many people start a good work, but then they fall on the wayside. And so many people that will say, I'm going to live for God. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that for God. But then all of a sudden, they sit up and they'll fall on the wayside. God is calling us to go forward and finish what we started. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. He said, finish the work. Hallelujah. I love it because, see, he didn't stop there. He didn't stop there. He said, say not. There are yet four months and then come a harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And a lot of people don't really understand what that means. Because, see, back then they were farmers. Back then they used to go and get wheat, amen? And it's something about wheat. When you're sitting up and you're gathering everything and it's time to go and get the wheat out the field, when it turns white, that's when it's in that critical state. That's when you got to go and get it. If you don't go get it at that time, you can lose your whole harvest. Because in a couple of hours, in one day, it can be right and then it can go sour. It can all spoil. And then all of a sudden, you have nothing coming in. So that means that now is the time that we got to go forth when they're white already. Amen? So now we got to go and gather all that wheat that's in the field. We got to go no matter how we feel. Because it might not come at an hour or a time when we really feel like doing it. We might be a little bit under the weather. We might feel like aches and bars in our, in our bodies and so much things are going on. So, but we got to press because we don't want to lose our harvest. Because see, that if that harvest depended on their family. That's what supported their family. Amen. That's what gave them. Amen. I gotta take these glasses off. Amen. That's what gave them the, 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 the finances and the income that they need to be able to support their families. Amen. Amen. So that's something that we gotta really look at and we gotta understand when it says they're right already. That means they're at that critical state. Amen. But I like it because see, not only was he talking about the wheat, he's talking about the souls in the field. Amen. amen. And in verse 36 says, he that reapeth, amen, hallelujah, it says, he that reapeth receiveth wages and gather fruit unto eternal life. They both, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth rejoice together. See, the Bible says one soweth, one planteth, and another water, but God giveth the increase. Amen. Don't you know we sow in the word of God? See, we got to go forth and tell people about what Jesus has done in our lives and what Jesus is doing. We got to truly go forth and be a testimony. Amen. That's why I thank God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It don't matter where I go. It don't matter how I live and what's going on. People will sit up and say, I remember you used to do this. I, I remember you used to do that. The key word is I used to. And I thank God that I used to because God was able to clean me up. They can't say I've been a goody two shoes my whole life. They can't sit up and say that I was saved and sanctified my whole life. I, I was a sinner. I feel like Paul when he said of sinners I was cheap. I, I was one of the rank sinners. One of the worst that ever could be. But I know it's no sin so far enough that God cannot reach way down and pull you out. So I'm here to let you know we got to go forward and do the work. Don't be ashamed of your testimony. Don't be ashamed of what God has brought you from. Don't be ashamed that you used to be all messed up. And mess around It's a use for these things And I'm here to tell you now It's time for us to get up And tell the devil Oh, I'm not coming down I'm not surrendering I'm not going back I'm not going to go and surrender To the world that you call You want to trip me up with I'm moving and pressing towards the mark Of the high calling Which is in Christ Jesus You've got to embrace That's what we got to do that's what it takes, church. I love it. 
But it says that we can rejoice together. Verse 37. And he says, and herein is the same truth. One sown and another reap. I sent you to reap that wherein you bestow no labor. Other men labored and you have entered into their labors. Don't you know because of the labors of others, amen, we're entering into it. Amen. Nobody out here, nobody that's listening to me right now, amen, can sit up and say that they were in the World War One, World War Two, and all the different things, amen, that brought us, amen, to a point where we actually able to work, we're able to walk the streets, amen, we're able to actually, you know, have the different things that's been invented and have freedom, amen, to go forth. I, I, I like it because, see, in China, I'm going to say it, in China you can't worship Jesus freely, openly. You can't just sit up and say, I'm going to go onto the internet and praise God. I'm going to give God some glory. No, you can't do that. If you're not worshiping the God that they say, they'll put you to death. Yeah, I said it and it's true. That's right. And now they're trying to, because of the corona, trying to stop people from praising God. I said it a couple weeks ago, and I'm going to say it again, because still in certain states, they're telling you, you can't come to church. You can't praise God. If you come, you can pray, you can read, and you got to leave, but you can't sing praises into God. And I remember when they tried to stop the people from praising Jesus, uh, when he was going in, and they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, glorify them, and he told them, tell them to stop. And he said, if they don't praise me, the rocks will cry out. And I'm not going to have a rock cry out for me. I'm going to praise my God. Because the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. Don't you know what I'm going through? I can praise him. When I'm feeling bad and down, I can praise him. So he can come into that situation. I don't have to fret. I don't have to worry. I'm a worshiper and not a warrior. I can give God some glory. It don't matter what God I'm going to praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's where we need to be. It's time to finish the work. Amen. The Bible says lay hold to the gospel plow. Stop looking back. Amen. Stop worrying about the things that are behind. Amen. Amen. You know, I heard a scenario and it really stuck with me because a lot of people are living life through the rear view. And you say, what you mean by that? They're looking through that rear view mirror. And they're trying to drive forward. And see, the thing is, the rear view mirror is just to make you aware of the things that have passed you. Amen. Make you aware of the things that might be coming up to hit you. Amen. But you're supposed to focus on what's in front of you. Amen. Just glance and look up at the rear view to make sure that, you know, okay, everything is okay. Behind me, you know, I'm getting further away from that trouble that was in my tail, that further away from that situation that was holding me back, and I'm pressing towards the one. But so many people want to look in that rear view saying, oh, I miss those things. I'm trying to get back to those things. See, I press towards the one. I count all those things that's dumb. I put them behind me because I'm pressing towards the mark of the high calling. This is what we must do. We must eat truth. The Bible says, buy the truth and sell it. That's the word of God. So many people want to live with traditions. Uh, live with what my mama said. Uh, you know, like the water bottle. My, 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 my mama told me. My, 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 my mama said. And they, they messed with them and teased them and came against them. But don't you know, I don't care what your mama said. I don't care what your daddy said. All I care about is what Jesus said. The Bible said, let the word of God be true. Uh, and every man alive. Uh, and you in the human uh, being error. Uh, I'm here to tell you. Uh, you can't tell me nothing uh, according to the word of God, uh, unless it's lining up with the word of God. Uh, he said, try the spirit by the spirit. Uh, see, we can't finish the word uh, if we allow ourselves to be the seed uh, pulled to and fro. Uh, we can't finish the word uh, if we start down in our spirit. Because uh, the Bible says the just uh, must live by faith. Uh, in order for us to truly finish the word, uh, we got to put our trust in God, uh, not in man. Uh, we can't put our trust in our neighbors. Uh, we can't put our trust in our parents. Uh, we can't put our trust Nothing, but God's unchanging world. Amen. Amen. Oh, glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's see, I thank God for this because, see, I, I go back into the Bible and I think about what John was going and they seen Jesus on the water. 
he was walking on the water. He said, Lord, if that be you, bid me to come out. He said, come out. Back then, that was called faith. Amen. Let somebody do that today. <laughs> oh, look at this crazy fool. <laughs> See, they call that called John crazy for believing that Jesus said, come be it unto me. Come on. come on. When he starts singing, say, look at you, fool. Look at you, look at you. You shouldn't have believed that man. But this man is the Savior. Yeah. We're talking about the Almighty God. God manifests in the flesh. Yeah. See, because of the doubt that people have of who Jesus is, not really recognize that he is the Christ. Yeah. The one that came to take away the sins of the world. Oh, glory be to God. But see, I like it with, uh, even with Elijah. You know, because we're living in that town right now. He had 400 prof uh, false prophets on one side, 450 on the other side. That's 850 false prophets coming Amen. against them. Amen. And he had the people of God sitting like, well, which one is God? Don't you know we're living right now? People don't know who God really is. Amen. And they said, let the God who answered by fire be God. You know what? If that happened today, you know, right then they was waiting. So I want to see God move. If that had happened today, look at this bad man. This man sitting there talking about fire coming down from heaven. But see, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. I'm here to let you know about what God is able to do for you. What God is able to turn around. God is able to deliver you out of any situation. But they say he is a madman because what, what fire is going to come down? Oh, no, no. Tell God. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. But you know what? Jesus told us that they hated him, so they're going to hate us to arm ourselves likewise. On, I remember when Lazarus died, yeah. and he said, Lazarus sleeping. The disciples didn't understand what happened. they like, if he sleep, then he rested. So he had to make it plain. Lazarus is dead. But Jesus said he know what he's going to do because he was in control. Amen. Letting us know, don't fret. Don't get up and get all panicky about a situation. He said, we're going to go see Lazarus. After three days, Reuben Morrison said he in, and now four days, he's thinking for real. It's like he dead dead. Period. You move, something breaking. So when he showed up, he was already gone. Everybody was like in despair. So he like, don't you know I'm the resurrection? Don't you know that I came to fulfill God's will? Amen. But if we in today's time, 2021, they like, look at this mad man. You know he need to be committed. He's talking about going to raise somebody up from the dead. You know, because that's, that's right now, folks are not believing in the word of God. Amen. But Jesus went in and said, forget all the naysayers. Forget all the ones that are doubting. Forget that. He went to the tomb. And he went with all power and declared, Lazarus. Come forth. Don't you know you got to speak to that dead situation in your life? You got to speak to that thing that looked like it wasn't going to be resurrected. That thing that you thought was all over with. Uh, that thing that you thought couldn't come back together. You thought that your marriage might have been over. You thought that the job might have been over. You thought that your life might have been over. But you need to speak to that situation. Speak life into that situation. Speak life into your marriage. Speak life into your relationship with God. You feel that you're so far gone that you can't come back. This is a marathon. Amen. And what I like about a marathon, half marathon, whole marathon, it don't matter what it is. Amen. In a marathon, it doesn't matter what place you come in. Come on now. Long as you keep running. Okay. I remember people were running in a marathon and they just run it. They start off looking good. Look at them, they all good. Got good form. You know, running. Just going. All of a sudden, they start getting tired. They ain't got that good posture. They go, oh, okay. Then they start skipping. And they like, oh, I'm so tired. 
Then they like, okay, I'm walking, I'm walking, okay. And then all of a sudden they might have a side knee, uh, a pain in their side, so now they crawl. They're like, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. And then, you know, people on the side encouraging them, saying, come on, you can make it, you can make it. You see, I, I like that because, see, it reminds me of the host of heaven uh, sitting up saying, uh, you know, you can make it, uh, you can make it. Uh, and they and they're trying to make it to the finish line because uh, they know uh, I might not have came in first uh, I might not have came in second uh, I might have been the last one to cross the finish line uh, but I made it in uh, it don't matter if I'm the first one to make it to heaven uh, or the last one uh, as long as I make it in uh, I'm going to be like Paul when he told Timothy I have finished my work uh, I have fought a good fight uh, oh Lord uh, my time to be offered up has come uh, God has called and now I know I must go, but I ain't finished it. So I'm not worried about what's going on. I'm not worried about not being ready. I'm not worried about what they're saying. Because I know I finished my work. And that's the way we need to be. We need to have that testimony saying that I finished my work. I went forward and I didn't let nothing hinder me. I didn't let nothing stop me from going forward doing what God wants me to do. Hallelujah. I thank God for it. Because sometimes we don't know what's going to happen around the corner. We don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I thank God because a lot of people might not have heard about what happened when it comes to the accident. But no one expected today my wife didn't leave the house thinking that she was going to have her car towed out by someone else. She didn't know that was going to happen. But the enemy wanted to hinder her, to discourage her. If they didn't, I guarantee you, saying, if you weren't picking them up for church, you wouldn't have been out here. But I'm here to tell you, you know what? She was doing what God wanted her to do. And God said he will not leave you, nor will he forsake you. He will be with you always. Even though it might seem like you at your wit's end in the natural, but I'm here to tell you, God is able to turn everything around. That's the reason why the Bible says the just must live by his faith. We're living in that last time. And I want to go, I want to close with Hebrews chapter 11. Because this is a scripture, amen, that I encourage everybody, amen. If you're feeling discouraged and you're feeling like you can't make it, amen, come on and play. If you're feeling like you can't make it, if you're feeling like all things are just falling apart, read Hebrews chapter number 11. A lot of people call it the faith hall of fame, amen. But I thank God for it because, see, in chapter 11, it's an encouragement because it lets us know about people that were not perfect people, but were still accepted unto God because they believed, truly believed, that they moved out on faith. Now, verse number one says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand the words. Were, the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen. Were not made by the things which do appear. I love that. But he said. By faith. Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. That came by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified of his gift, and by it being by him being dead, yet speaketh. See, don't you know when you die in faith and you allow God, Amen, to truly be the focus of your life? When we reevaluate our priorities and put God in front, don't you know He'll lead you and guide you? That's that faith. We gotta trust that God is gonna lead us into that next dispensation of life. Gonna lead us to that next step that we need to do. 
You know, in the military, we call cadence. Left, right, left, left, right, left. Even police academy. And I messed with my wife about it because she wasn't good at that. Amen? It's like she didn't know her left from her right. Uh, couldn't count. I don't know what it was, but she just couldn't get it together. Amen? Hallelujah. I like messing with her, but I thank God because, you know, later on in life, she couldn't get it in the academy. That was 14 years ago. But later on in life, she grabbed hold to it and started to teach the ones in the academy how to go left, right, left. How to keep cadence. How to put one foot in front of the other. And I thank God for it because, see, don't you know that's what we got to do? See, when we first come to God, we don't know how to put one foot in front of the other and walk by faith. But faith come by hearing. And by hearing the word of God. So you got to come and be taught. Come and learn the word of God so you can learn how to walk by faith. So you will stumble and everything else and fall, trip up all the time because you're trying to do it. But it's time to come and feast of the word of God. And the reason why we got to have faith, because in verse number six it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. It says, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And it's a commoner. You got to believe that he is. What is he? He's that physician. He's that lawyer. He's that doctor. Amen. He's that father when your father has forsaken you. Because yeah. see, don't you know they'll forsake you. They might die. They loved you all while they was here, but they might have to go and see the Lord. But he'll be that comforter in that time of need. He summed it up when he told Moses, tell him that I am. That I am. Whatever it is you need. Whatever it is. Whatever it is you're going through. The heartache, the pain. God is here for you. We started this work. Now it's time to continue until it's finished. But he said, must believe that he is. And once you truly believe that he's who he said he is. The Savior, the Messiah, the one that's going to redeem me. He said, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. That means you're pressing through the tiredness. You're pressing through the heartache. You're pressing through the pain. You're pressing through the trials and the things that are going on in your life. For the ones that are going through bereavement, you're pressing through and you're still giving God the glory. You don't allow the anger to overtake you. That's the trick of the enemy. Because the enemy wants you to respond emotionally. But I'm here to tell you, God wants you to respond in love. He wants you to show forth the love. That is the reason why I'm here today. To show you that God loves you. That God wants you to turn unto him. Let's give God a hand praise. Let us all stand. Because see, God has called each and every one of us to turn from our ways. And to turn to him. The Bible tells us to repent. We've been doing it our way all our lives. But he said turn from what we're doing and turn to him. Make up in your mind that this is what I want to do. I believe his word now. I want to repent. I want to turn to God. But he didn't stop there. He said and be baptized. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of your sins. The washing away. The cleansing of your sins. Amen. If you don't add Jesus to the water. It's like washing dishes without detergent. Amen. Your sins will still be applied to your life. Because the Bible says there's no name under heaven given among men. Amen. Whereby we must be saved. And that name is Jesus. Amen. And then he said you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift that God will give unto you. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. God will give it to you. But you got to come to him. He said all those that thirst come. The bridegroom says come. All say come. And drink freely of the waters of life. Come unto Jesus. Let, let us pray. Father Lord God in the name of Jesus. We thank you. And honor you today Lord God. 
we thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to come, oh Lord God, and feast of your word. I'm asking today, Lord God, that you will strengthen your people, oh Lord God. Strengthen them to go forth and press towards the mark of the high calling, oh Lord God. To continually press, oh Lord God, to do your will, Lord God. You know, though the enemy might try to hinder us, oh Lord God, oh Lord God, calls us to overcome, oh Lord God. Calls us to digi diligently seek you today, Lord God. Oh Lord God, I'm asking that you will break every chain today, oh Lord God. As they did in the book of Acts, Paul and Silas, Lord God. As they praised you and gave you glory, Lord God. Come to us in a midnight hour. Come to us and shake, oh Lord God, the foundations that is trying to hinder us, oh Lord God. That we, oh Lord God, may go forth and serve you, oh Lord God. Oh Lord God, as we lay hold to this gospel plow, cause us to go, oh Lord God, with fervence today, oh Lord God, being counted worthy, oh Lord God, to serve thee. Oh Lord God, I thank you and honor you today, oh Lord God, as you draw your people. Oh Lord God, we lift up the bishop before you, oh Lord God, that you will heal, deliver, and set free today, oh Lord God. Show forth of your will, show forth of your wisdom. This we ask in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. Come on and give God a hand praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.